Well, in today's world, we're lucky because we don't have to deal with printing physical documents like this. Our frustrations can still crop up from time to time, especially when dealing with things in Bubble that aren't working for us. But if you stick around, you're gonna learn about this amazing PDF plugin that's gonna leave you like this. As we dive in and get going here, first I'm gonna say that we're gonna see the setup of the plugin inside of Bubble, and then the second thing, we're gonna look at two examples. And so I wanna introduce those two examples up front here so you can determine that if this video is the right one for you to continue watching. Um, the first example is that we're gonna do this sort of marketing dashboard. It's uh, some stats, it's a table of stats basically about some top performers uh, amongst things in a marketing dashboard system. And then the second, Example we're going to look at imagine we had some kind of business software that you know handled the internal stuff for that business And one of those things is employee reviews. So we're going to look at uh, You know what it would be to have one of these just stored as a PDF that's printed stored into the database Whereas this one maybe we want to print it out or print it as a uh, PDF and then email it to someone or we just want to print it and download it for ourselves We're making it self-service so that someone can use this uh, generate report button. First and foremost, before any diving into any of this, I will say that this is a sponsored post. I will always be transparent about those types of things, um, but I chose this particular plugin because it has really great support. And there's this adage that uh, good help is not cheap and cheap help is not good. So I really do recommend this plugin. It is the best PDF one that I have personally encountered out there. Um, I know I have some other options on the channel as well for free PDF plugins, um, but if you look at the comments of that, you do notice that a lot of folks end up struggling a little bit with the free version for the PDF Conjurer plugin. Now, so what we're gonna get into for this video is that we will see here, first and foremost, we can use the existing layouts that we create in Bubble, which is awesome because um, this is so much more flexible because Bubble's ability to build layouts is so much more flexible and uh, yeah, there, there's a lot more variations that you can do. Next up, download PDF and save file to the database where you could email it after you've saved it to the database, obviously. And then a few things to know, it is a paid plugin, uh, but their support is really great. Uh, it is, works for the new responsive engine only, and a few other tidbits as you can control the margins and the page breaks getting the exact layout that you would desire. So basically by the end of this video, you will see an option should you choose to go down this route where everything will be known on in terms of how to print out what it is that you're looking for. Because obviously you have something in your mind, you're aiming to uh, get it working and that's why you're in this video. So let's dive into our first example here. So over here on this, leaderboard of these assets. Let's go ahead and head to our plugins area for this app where I'm going to install the plugin. You can find it by looking for PDF creator and scroll down to this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay, great. So now with that installed, the next thing I need to do is go and find that element and then just drop it onto the page. And so it's gonna be under P, PDF creator. And so I'm just gonna go ahead, it needs to be visible on the page. I'm just gonna drop it in here, see where it ends up. So next up, what I wanna do is, I'm gonna make this button work. Uh, and to do that, I need to tell it what it needs to print. And to tell it what it needs to print, you want to go over to your settings. So under settings general, make sure that this exposed option to add an ID attribute element is checked. And if it is checked, then you will have this option for the ID attribute here shown at the bottom of whatever, whatever group it is that you would like to uh, print off, basically. So you don't necessarily need to print off the whole page, although you could. Um, your choice is to... Uh, decide what it is that you want to show up in the printer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to call this the table and then I'm going to wire up this button by adding a workflow and so then do a search for generate a PDF creator and let's take a look at some of these options. So the first and foremost thing is to note is to add this table. Now if you're going to use a couple different uh, elements on your page for example what you want to do is you want to give each of them a unique name 
and separate out the, so let's call that table. Let's just say that this is the next one and don't use any spaces because this is, this is how ID attributes work in HTML and CSS. Um, use dashes or just use one single word. And then let's say you would have a last one. And so just a space and a comma, so follow that syntax. If you're gonna have multiple groups on your page that you're gonna to stack together. Uh, let's see, scale. This is going to be higher quality. The higher it is, the, the lower it is, it's gonna be more, it's gonna be faster. And let's start with two or three, play around with it till you get the quality that you like. If you're printing off images, for example, or you have some graphic heavy thing, maybe you're doing logo, showing off logos to a client or something like that that were generated by AI, for example, um, then this would be uh, something you wanna play with. Orientation, portrait, or landscape. We're gonna take a look at this uh, and see in a moment. I am going to just give these a nice 20 uh, bit of margin around all of them. And then page break, what this does is that as it's, as, the, as it's printing, it's gonna look at the element that's near the page break and it's gonna decide, okay, if this is set to no, then let's say that element is like, you know, it's an image and it's 500 pixels tall. Well, the, the page break is actually going to cut directly through the, the middle of that image if you have it set to no. If you have it set to yes, it's going to look and be like, okay, well, since it's going to cut here, we're going to move the whole thing down underneath, underneath the page break. Hope that's clear. Um, for orientation, because I know how this table is, well, we'll look at it with portrait just real quick. But basically, what it is that you want to pay attention to is wh what is your layout roughly like and then how might that fit an orientation? Because uh, it really doesn't matter when you print off the PDF, like um, you just want it to look good. No one, no one cares one way or the other. Okay, and so we can see that portrait really is not doing it here. It's actually having some issues. And I wanted to even go ahead and print and show that. I've seen this before, that it's no big deal when you start to see something like that. The thing that you want to do is you want to go and play around with first because I know that this is going to fix it but the other thing so it's like super squished is what's happening so you would want to go and uh, there's one other thing well I'm going to show this off because I know that even this one is not going to work exactly how I want it to because how I set this up originally for this table is I wanted it to be you know in case there's a really long name here uh, but then with a report being generated here uh, I note that, okay, it's now it's squished and it's, it's still not exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to edit these ones down to head over to the layout. And so what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just showing off the example that the, the screen resolution is different than a printer resolution. And so you may have to play with it is all I'm saying. So now let's see how this one looks. So my table uh, on a web representation is still pretty good. And then now if I click generate the report here, we can see that everything lines up really good and nicely here. And so with that page break set to yes, like this 17 might have been in the middle here. So let's go and look at that as well, just briefly. So let's set that to no. So you can get an idea of what the difference is. Also note that when you're printing things, so see how that took a second to load down here. Um, it will, it, you, have, you always have to wait until you load everything on the page until hitting whatever it is to, to print. Or if you have some kind of automated script running that uh, you, you probably wanna have a pause in it. Okay, so there we can see this this image is kind of like in between the two. So that's, and as well as these, as well as some of the, the text. So that is the difference with this page break. So typically you want to set it to yes. Cool. Uh, we also have this auto download here that I didn't mention that um, automatically downloads it. Maybe you don't want to do that. We're going to see now in this next, next example where we're not really interested in downloading it. We're more interested in uh, just saving it to the database. Uh, but also before that, well, I'll just point this out then for this file name. We'll leave it as at that for this one. 
Um, but it's great, right? We see that we can print off, you know, a whole nice looking table here. We can email this to a client. We could do, you know, whatever it is that we want to do with uh, the PDF once we have it. Cool. So let's go and let's take a look at another um, setup. And in this setup, I already have this PDF creator dragged onto the page. And what I'm going to do is let's go and take a look at this actual page itself. So we have an annual review for, you know, some kind of employees type of software. And we can see, you know, this job title here. And let's go and actually first, though, um, let's take a look at the data type for the data type. So what we have is three fields, date of review. That'll be the date, employee, who it's for, basically, which is a user and the review file, which I'm calling it a file, but it's actually a text. That's what the PDF element will spit out. And so with that PD element on the page, uh, same as just dropping it on from the other one, it's just there. Let's go and look at what we want to do. We want to have this group um, that we're going to print this off on. I'm calling this group form. And let's go and set this up for the scenario where we don't want to print or uh, download it. We want to save it to the database. So let's see what we're going to do here. So we'll set that up as form and then we'll call this, uh, let's go with the current user's full name. Then we'll give a space, uh, let's say annual review file. And maybe we'll give it the, uh, the date that it was taken as well. Format it as, let's say this one. Scale will go to, and then this is where the difference is from last time, where we are not downloading it. So what are we going to do? Um, and then page break, basically everything else we'll leave as fine because um, I already like the I already like the the margins well enough for this that are actually on the page. Okay, so uh, let's see what else do we need to do. Well, since we are not downloading it, we do need to save it to the database. And how are we going to do that in the data type that I just showed off? Well, um, when this runs and after installing the plugin, you'll have a trigger for a workflow uh, under elements PDF. A PDF creator has been recorded. So once you've done that, let's go and create a new thing. And we'll create a review. We'll add all the fields and We're just going to use the current user for this. So you know that in your world, you could pass data into this page about who it's for, what it's for. I'll leave that on your side of thing, but then basically this PDF creators URL. And then, so that will get it into the database. So now what we're left to do is to give this a go and I'll just type in the notes that I have for our fortune cookie writing employee who seeks winds of knowledge and shores of opportunity. Um, he takes his own advice to heart, apparently, which is great. And so let's go ahead and hit complete there. And then I'm just going to show off that when we, if I go and inspect here for this PDF creator, we can see that our file is here. Uh, let's, but also, so we can take a look at that. So that's cool. Um, but let's go and look at our database. Okay, so here we are. And we have our review file here that can be referenced, can be emailed to anyone, and so on and so forth. So a quick note for anyone who may have heights of elements that are going to vary based upon a unknown amount of content that's going to go inside of them. What do I mean by that? Well, you could have, um, you know, a, people type in a bunch of things here. Now I think this one's actually going to turn and, and add a scroll bar. Yeah, this one does. So it's not exactly the example I mean, but imagine that you had an invoice that the number of items on it are going to vary based upon a repeating group. And you want to get the uh, printed PDF to have a page cut that is just right. So I'm going to offer a, an additional way that will help you navigate the uh, nuances of getting the exact layout that you want on your PDF when it's created. So one of the things that we have set up for this right now is that we're just using this one form and we're printing off the entire thing uh, when the button is hit. But I'm going to show off a, an alternative way. Let's see if I can't update this to 
show off exactly what I'm aiming to describe here. So I'm just going to change the sizes on these and then recall that we have this one large group with just this form printing everything off. And then let's go ahead and we're just going to double check here for testing that we're going to allow this to be auto downloaded. And then let's go and look at the basically how this gets printed off. Okay, and so we can see in this case, because of particular sizing elements, that we're running into something where it's cutting it off because of the large container on it that there's an extra space here. So how to overcome that and how to get exactly the layout that you're looking to achieve, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and take this one off and then we'll break this into its individual parts because this is a, a great tip for achieving exactly what it is that you're looking for. So part two, part three. I think a lot of people will find this method quite helpful in terms of dialing that in. So six, five, four, three, two, and one. And then let's also note, so since we're using these ones, we're gonna lose this a little bit of spacing around it. So let's go and uh, this is great because you're getting to see all this precision happen around this. So we're gonna say 20. Okay, and then so we'll auto download that. And then here, this is where a lot of the magic happens. So the trick is have one space, or a comma and one space, and nothing else, and no spaces in between for the ID attributes. And then let's go give that a try. And so we can see that this layout is basically exactly what we want. This space is down here. And again, we could, we could even break this text and these ones into different parts as well. It's a, it's a helpful trick to nail down the exact format of things that you're looking to have when you break things up like that and into multiple pieces. So with those two examples, there is so much more that I'm leaving out. Um, but I don't want to make a, you know, insanely long tutorial. So what I would say is that um, play around with the different settings for what it is that you're aiming to look. But I mean, most of that play around with your layout on, on your bubble page. And then if you have any trouble with anything, again, the plugin author is very supportive, very responsive um, for getting help if you find any issues that uh, you're not able to overcome with this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. If you did, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel for more great bubble tips, and thanks so much for watching.